In the year 1873, in November, a nun known as Sister M. D. L. C. began to hear prolonged sighs beside her. Sister M. D. L. C. cried out, Oh, who are you? You frighten me. Whatever you do, don't show yourself. Tell me who are you. But no answer was coming. The sighs continued and came nearer. In vain, the Sister M. D. L. C. multiplied her prayers, communions, face of the cross and rosaries. But the sighs did not cease and remained unexplained until February 15, the year 1874, when she heard these words. Do not be afraid. You will not see me in my sufferings. I am Sister M.G. Sister M.G. was a nun of the same convent who had died on February 22 in the year 1871 at the age of 36. The suffering soul, Sister M.G., then told her that she would come frequently in order to help her sanctify herself. The plan of God was that Sister M.D.L.C., by her holy life, should relieve and ultimately deliver Sister M.G. In this video, we'll be learning more about the souls in Purgatory in detail by the words of the suffering soul, Sister M.G. Our Mother Superior is in heaven since the day of her death, thanks to her suffering and great charity. If you were as perfect as God wishes you to be, He would be ready to bestow many graces upon you. God wants you to be holier than many others. Father L is in Purgatory because he was too fond of giving retreats and preaching in many places instead of taking care of his parish. I am the one who is suffering most at the present moment since I was not true to my vocation. When the soul leaves the body, it is as if it were lost in, or if I may say so, surrounded by God. It finds itself in such a bewildering light that in the twinkling of an eye, it sees its whole life spread out and at this sight, it sees what it deserves and this same light pronounces its sentence. The soul does not see God but is annihilated in his presence. If the soul is guilty as I was and therefore deserves to go to purgatory, it is so crushed by the weight of the faults that still remain to be blotted out that it hurls itself into purgatory. When there are souls like mine, and that is nearly all whose lives have been so empty and who paid little or no attention to their salvation, then their whole life has to be begun over again in this place of expiation. The soul has to perfect itself all over again and love and desire him whom it did not love sufficiently on earth. We do not see God in purgatory, that would make it heaven. I suffer very much, but my greatest torment is not seeing God. It is a continuous martyrdom. It makes me suffer more than does the fire of purgatory. If you knew what the heat of the purgatory is compared to yours. A little prayer does us so much good. It is like a glass of water given to a thirsty person. Oh, if only we were allowed to come back to earth. After knowing what God really is, what a different life we would lead. I can tell you about the different degrees of Purgatory because I have passed through them. In Purgatory, there are several stages. In the lowest and most painful, like a temporary hell, are the sinners who have committed terrible crimes during life and whose death surprised them in that state. It was almost a miracle that they were saved and often by the prayers of holy parents or other pious persons. Sometimes they did not even have time to confess their sins and the world thought them lost. But God, whose mercy is infinite, gave them at the moment of death the contrition necessary for their salvation on account of one or more good actions which they performed during life. For such souls, purgatory is terrible. It is a real hell with this difference that in hell they curse God whereas we bless him and thank him for having saved us. In the second purgatory are the souls of those who died with venial sins, not fully expiated before death 
or with mortal sins that they have been forgiven but for which they have not made entire satisfaction to the divine justice in this part of purgatory there are also different degrees according to the merits of each soul thus the purgatory of the consecrated souls or of those who have received more abundant graces is longer and far more painful than that of ordinary people of the world lastly there is the purgatory of desire which is called the threshold very few escape this to avoid it altogether one must ardently desire heaven and the vision of god the deprivation of the sight of our living jesus adds to the intense suffering i have been in the second purgatory since the feast of the annunciation on that day i saw the blessed virgin for the first time in the first stage we never saw her the sight of her encourages us and this beloved mother speaks to us of heaven while we see her our sufferings are also greatly diminished she comes to purgatory on her feasts and she goes back to heaven with many souls saint michael accompanies her next to the mass the way of the cross is the best prayer each day thousands of souls come to purgatory and most of them remain 30 to 40 years some for longer periods others for shorter i tell you this in terms of earthly calculations because here it is quite different On All Souls Day many souls leave the place of expiation and go to heaven also by a special grace of God on that day only all the suffering souls without exception have a share in the public prayers of the church even those who are in the great purgatory still the relief of each soul is in proportion to its merits many of the suffering souls receive this one help only in all the long years they pass here very few souls get any prayers The majority are totally abandoned and no thought or prayers are given them on earth. About the time of our release, we know nothing. If we only knew when the end of our sufferings would come, it would be intense relief. But no, it is not so. We know well that our sufferings decrease and our union with God becomes closer. But what day we shall be united to God, of that we know nothing. It is secret.